I received a laser cutter type Laser Master 2 2S from the company Ortur. The machine has a work area of up to 39.5x41cm. Included in the package are a power supply that delivers an output voltage of 24V at up to 2A, a USB cable for data transfer from a PC, tools for the assembly and some materials that can be engraved with the machine. Also included are safety goggles and you should make sure to wear these while operating the device. The firmware of the LaserMaster 22S is based on Garbel and in contrast to some competitors, Ortur follows the rules of the license to publish the modified source code, this is totally in the spirit of how open is this gadget. The link to the repository can be found directly on the manufacturer's website. As always, there are high resolution photos of the package contents on my website. In addition to various laser machines, Orto also offers plenty of accessories for these devices. Extras I received are a metal grid for laser cutting... ...and an electric pump that can be used to blow a jet of air onto the surface for better results. Assembling the frame... ...and the wiring is done quickly, there are also many photos of this on how open is this gadget answering any questions on the assembling procedure. A microprocessor type ESP32 is placed on the mainboard, running the firmware Garbel. A socket for the power supply, the USB socket for data transmission and a socket for an offline controller are the interfaces to the world outside. A power button and a second button for resetting the firmware can be seen on the right. The front and back of the circuit board are labeled perfectly. The laser module is type LU-4SF. SF stands for short focus, meaning a focal length of 30mm. The maximum laser power delivered by the built-in diode is 5.5W while consuming an electric input power of around 16W. The two axes are guided along extruded aluminum of the dimensions 20x20mm with the help of plastic rollers on metal ball bearings. The backlash can be minimized via eccentric nuts using the included wrench. The axes are driven via timing belts. The two pulleys of the Y axis are connected via a round rod and so driven by only one stepper motor. The advantage of this construction is that the two ends of the X axis cannot be moved independently, so the mechanics won't get misaligned over time. The laser module is attached to the X-axis and so driven by the second stepper motor. The LaserMaster 22S has mechanical home switches for both axes. After switching on, the laser head is thus moved to the zero point. As already mentioned, the maximum work area is 39.5x41cm. The laser is focused manually, a 3mm spacer must fit between the workpiece and the plastic protection of the laser. As the first test I cut a disc out of 4mm poplar plywood. The laser power is set to 80%, the feed rate to 300mm per minute.
with the settings the disc is cut out after 3 passes. The wood was placed on a sheet of steel and the underside looks anything but nice because it was wetted by the vaporized material, visible at the cutting edge. In the second test, the metal grid and the electric air pump are used. Again, the plywood is cut after 3 passes. But the underside and the cutting edge look much better. The metal grid comes with the sheet metal for the underside, so the laser cannot cause any damage to your workbench. As a reference for the laser's performance, I next cut a 30mm disc out of 2mm cardboard. With 80% laser power and a cutting speed of 900mm per minute, the disc is cut through in 3 passes. More about the test procedure and high resolution photos of the result can be found on the website of how open is this gadget. A stack of 4 pieces of 2mm cardboard shows the limit of the cutting performance. Here too, the laser power is set to 80%, while the cutting speed is 300mm per minute. Again, three passes are executed. Two of the cardboard discs were cut through cleanly. Another test is to engrave graphics on stainless steel. A vector graphic is engraved on one side, the laser moves with full power along the edges of the given lines. The speed is set to a rather slow value of 100mm per minute, only with this, the stainless steel can be heated sufficiently to remove some material from the surface. The electrical input power with the laser switched fully on is about 30 watts. The aluminum heatsink of the laser diode heats up to 38 degrees Celsius, while the ambition temperature in my video studio is 27 degrees Celsius. On the back side, a bitmap graphic is engraved line by line. The laser is switched on and off for each black dot in the template. There is also more about this test procedure and high resolution photos of the results on the website of how open is this gadget.
As a next test I engraved the sample materials that chipped with the laser master. One of the plywood tiles is decorated with a graphic. Again, the template is a bitmap file that is processed line by line. The air pump blows the vaporized material away from the surface, resulting in finer dots. The airflow generated by the pump is so strong that the plywood plate, which is obviously not completely flat, is moved. Coated aluminum is engraved now. The laser cannot engrave bare aluminum because this material has too good thermal conductivity. Only the colored coating is evaporated from the bone shaped aluminum. With that, the engraving is clearly visible. What other materials can be processed by the laser machine is written on the website of how open is this gadget. There you will also find high resolution photos of the Auto Laser Master 2 2S, its components and the test results, as well as all information about the gadget. It is intentional that are more or less withheld comments in this video because how open is this gadget is meant for those willing to form an own opinion about the machine, so have a click on the project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.